All right. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone, depending on where you are. My name is Shayla. I'm the VP of Student Success here at USMLA Sarti, and we are so excited to have you today. Uh, we know that the September deadline is quickly approaching, so these next few months are crucial to your application success. Uh, consider enrolling with us today so we can guide you through all of the parts of the match journey. Uh, today, I'm with our chief mentor, Pawan Kira, and we are going to talk about the top 10 mistakes that IMGs make when applying for the match, and hopefully we can help you avoid those mistakes. Um, so uh, let's get started. Um, okay, uh, first, Pawan, did you have anything you wanted to add or touch on before we get started? Yeah, so a bit of a housekeeping. Uh, so we will take questions um, you can put them in the chat box or in the Q&A. So we will get to the questions. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's get started and uh, we'll take it as it comes. Okay, sounds great. So um, what's the where should we start? What's the first mistake that we are, we're at this point? Yeah, so the most obvious uh, thing that uh, many students miss is ECFMG certification, you know, uh, it, it is required, I won't say it is required, but it is definitely good to have at the time of application. Uh, you should all know what it entails, you know, step one, CK, OET, et cetera. Now, there may be cases that you can apply without ECFMG certification. So for example, if you're a recent graduate with a 260 in step scores, uh, but you just got the CK score and you may not be certified in time, then it's fine. But, you know, we still have, what, about uh, two and a half months or so. So make sure you know what uh, it entails, the ECFMG certification, and make sure uh, you are on track to do it before uh, September 27th. I, I think that is important for a lot of students. Okay, so just to be clear, it doesn't have to be done by the September deadline. If if it happens after, yes. what happens? Uh, yes, it need it is not a requirement per se, but uh, for students who may have an average profile, maybe some red flags, uh, you definitely want the ECFMG certification uh, by by twenty seventh. Okay, great. Um, okay, then the next thing would be clinical experience. Can you tell us where where the mistakes are there? So yes, I, I think this is something which a lot of students are aware of, but just to uh, make sure uh, I can communicate it, uh, without US clinical experience, you know, say three to four months, it is gonna be very, very hard to match. Now, there are cases when you may not get a visa, so in those special cases, uh, you know, some type of telerotation can help. Uh, and, and you know, telerotations like we also have on, on our site, we help uh, more than 2,000 students each year. There are telerotations which give you uh, patient access, EMR access, uh, you know, patient management kind of skills. So those telerotations will be okay. Uh, most of you should prefer on-site, hands-on electives or externships. So that is the key. Uh, observerships, one or two observership at a university program may be okay, but a lot of students miss out on the importance of uh, A, the U.S. clinical experience, B, the letterhead. You know, the letterhead from a residency program really matters. So the quality of the letters, the letterhead, and obviously the actual U.S. experience. A lot of students underestimate that. I think that's a big mistake. Okay, so prioritizing hospital letterhead. And and I know you mentioned it, but I do get that question a lot. Does telerotation still have any weight at this point? So, you know, if you are in the U.S., we highly recommend on-site rotations. But yes, there are cases that telerotations can work. In fact, uh, Sejal, probably you, you have that URL, the video. We have every year, even last year, students who matched without on-site rotations. See, uh, telerotations, depending on what type of telerotations can actually be very, very useful. It, it can work, 
But for a lot of people, we do recommend on-site rotations. Great, thanks. Um, okay, so the next thing would be research. What, what happens there? So research has become increasingly important. It is becoming important, A, because, you know, CS got out, uh, what, three years ago. Now step one has gone pass fail. So for a program perspective, you have only CK and maybe step three uh, to gauge mm -hmm. as an IMG. So research has come under a lot of focus and research publications more so. So they want to see, even if you are, let's say, going into FM or uh, some of the specialties you may not think would want research, the programs want to see that you understand research methodology, that you have interest in research. That is important. And, you know, again, depending on your year of graduation, depending on what you've been doing, there are different types of research publications. All of them can work, you know, from case reports to letters to editors to a complete manuscript. Uh, these things are all very good. Uh, what you should be aware of is they really need to see your interest and you are working towards it. Of course, um, we do have courses in research that uh, you can take a look at both very affordable side as well as uh, you know the manuscript and full-fledged uh, papers. Uh, the other thing to remember in research is that uh, publications in PubMed index journals are very highly rated by the programs, so you should be aware of that. The other thing as you do research, it is not only important to get you know publications, you have to be able to talk about it during the interview. So your own contribution, whether it was data gathering, analysis, uh, hypothesis generation, that is important. So don't just pay or or you know put ten papers on your ERA CV, uh, but you don't know anything about it. So that's something uh, that I always caution students on. You know, research is very important, but what you have actually done and can you talk about it becomes more important. Okay, yeah, that's great. A uh, couple of questions I get with research: Does home country research help at all? So that's a good question. Uh, absolutely, any research is important. I don't think, uh, you know, research is not important. So home country research is important, but uh, U.S. research and PubMed index journals and things like that are more important. So depending on your profile. So again, let's say you're a recent graduate with 250s, 260s, you just graduated whatever you have done in home country may be able to help you. Uh, but, you know, we still have three months. So a lot of our research courses are fairly fast tracked. So you can still, if you have not done any US-based research, remote research, it is still possible to get it done uh, before the season. And is there a minimum requirement for how many publications? So much to have. Yes, that is a good question. We always get that. How many minimum publications uh, should do I need? So for that, I would say quality is more important than quantity. Uh, but let's say internal medicine, I, I think two or three is a good number. Uh, but again, focus on quality than on quantity. Well, cool, thank you. Um, then the next thing would be doing some program research, like researching which programs to apply to. What's what do students often do there? Yeah. So the mistake in in this case, a lot of students do is they start very late, and when it comes to you know the last one week, then they randomly will apply to a lot of programs, 200, 250. While, you know, if you are done the research, uh, you should be able to understand uh, a program's requirement and your profile, how does it map to it? Has the program taken uh, your kind of profiles before? Have your school alumni gone there? Uh, what is the IMG match rate? So if you do start that research early, it can actually save you a lot of money and you can customize your program outreach to those programs. Um, I won't say it's that big a mistake if you have a lot of money. So then you just randomly apply. 
But what happens is if you do program research on time, then during the season, it helps you because you actually have studied the program. You can customize your messaging to them. You can reach out to them in a more effective way. So program research now would be the time to start. And our students, of course, will have access to you know, a complimentary program list. Uh, we are always talking with other organizations. So uh, we will be able to get our students discounted lists from other uh, providers also within a week. So that's something that uh, you should be aware of if you're uh, looking at some of these ARTHI courses. We will provide you uh, extensive guidance on program research, including classes. So how do you research for the program? What all databases to look at? What actually you should look at? I think that's important. Part of it is also covered in our classes. Okay, yeah, I think that's an important piece that gets forgotten a lot. Um... Okay, so the next part would be the personal statement and the CV. I think students are kind of aware of those, but what are some of the mistakes that they make? So, um, you know, the main thing you need to be aware of is that ERAS has changed its format this time. So they just came out and, uh, you know, they are limiting you to 10 experiences. We have a, an extensive class that we did last week where our panelists have gone over each and every detail of the changes in the ERA CV. In fact, there are two classes. Uh, so that is one major change that you need to be aware of. ERA's format is not the same as last season. So they have made those changes. Be aware of those. Uh, last year, there was a supplementary application. This year, so far, what we have seen is a lot of questions from supplementary application have gone into the main ERAs as well. So whether they will have supplementary application, we don't know yet. But main idea, uh, focus on the ERA CV. It has changed completely. Uh, not only that, how you articulate your experiences, skills, is important. So a lot of students will repeatedly write, you know, did history, physical, EMR access. So if in all those experiences, just by way of example, if you keep repeating it, it doesn't help. So ERAS CV is a very important document uh, for you to consider. Uh, then comes the personal statement. Personal statement is your story. It has to art articulate your aspirations, your career path as you see it fit to the specialty. I know uh, a lot of people think chat GPT is a solution to all of this. It is not. Chat GPT does not know your story. So make uh, sure that you pay attention to your personal statement. This will come up during the interviews. And of course, we now have just started a plan today uh, in fact, uh, you know, if you really need very focused, just ERAS CV and, and personalized PS help, uh, you'll work with our journalist team, you'll work with our physicians uh, to get your ERAS PS and CV uh, in a very well-crafted way. We'll give you access to the latest classes on, on the ERAS CV. So Sejal or, or Shaila, maybe you can show them the page and the URL. So that's an important part. Uh, it asks PS and CV, do not uh, underestimate it. Yeah, and then can, going along with how we help, um, can we address that question of what are the 10 uh, experiences to prioritize on the CV? That's going to be a big question so, this year. Yes, so what we'll do is uh, whether it is rotations, whether it is your work experience, uh, we will uh, you know get into details of each one of those uh, how to use active verbs on those, which experience to use, which not to use. For example, uh, you may be applying to internal medicine, but you may have radiology experiences. Uh, is it relevant? Is it not relevant? How do you link radiology experience to uh, internal medicine, which may be your focus specialty? So all of that, uh, you know, will we'll kind of help as part of the ERAS CV uh, finalization with, with the physicians. Okay, and I wanted to just show that. Yeah, no, this is new great. Yeah, thank about. you. Yeah, this is the new plan that uh, we just launched today. 
Uh, so CV plus, which means ERAS CV personal statement and very affordable. I mean, you know, we always uh, are listening to the students. Uh, some of you may not be able to afford the platinum or the gold plan. So this is focused on getting your PS and CV out, uh, you know, extensive review. Uh, so yeah, take a look at this page. Uh, uh, Sejal can probably give you the link in the chat. But uh, yeah, thank you, Shaila. Yeah. Does it include any interview prep? Yeah, this one is focused on the IRAS, CV, and PS. Uh, but we do have a new plan which focuses on interview prep, very affordable. Maybe this is a good time to show that yeah, as well. Uh, so this is the Turbo Match plan. Uh, again, if you look at it, what it does is it brings... Uh, uh, the best practices from all the plans very again we have kept in mind that students are looking for very affordable plans so it is a thousand dollars what it does is it gives you all classes so eras ps cv interview prep program outreach everything all classes it does give you eras cv ps review just as the other plan uh, but more importantly it will give you access to our Telegram group. It will give you the new classes that we have. So how do you use artificial intelligence, you know, chat GPT, some of those tools for program outreach. It'll talk about all the interview prep questions. Uh, how do you answer each one of those questions? So think of it as our gold and platinum with some changes to make it affordable to you. So pretty much most of those services are included, focused on those who want their ERAS PSCV done, who want you know, the preparation for interview, all classes. So I think it's about uh, 50 plus hours of classes. So take a look at this. This may be um, something of interest to you, especially if affordability is, is something you're looking at. So it's almost half the uh, price of uh, gold plan. And this turbo match plan includes access to the the res the personalized list of programs too. Yes, right? it, it will include everything. It'll include the program list. It will also, if you get interviews, we will tell you for that particular program uh, what type of questions mm -hmm. to prepare for. So the list is fairly comprehensive when it comes to interview preparation. So we have a database where we have identified questions from all programs, you know, especially IM, FM, Psych. So it's a very good uh, comprehensive database where you will see what questions, exact questions programs have asked in the last few years. A particular program, what questions is it asking? Yeah, pretty helpful tool. Um, okay, so we'll go back to our mistakes. I think we're about halfway through. Um, so the next one would be step three. Can you tell us about step three, how IMG should approach that? <clears throat> yes, uh, a lot of uh, repeat applicants actually make this mistake. Um, you know, they do not consider step three as part of their portfolio because they think, or they rightly so, I mean, they are quite busy in rotations and research, but uh, what is happening is step three is becoming increasingly important. Like I said, step one has gone pass fail, CS is not there. So from an IMG perspective, programs are looking at more quantifiable ways to assess you. Step three plays that role, but not everyone needs step three. So here is the dichotomy, right? Step three is important, but you need to really understand if step three is important for you and what exactly will it help you. For example, if you have done no rotations, I think you should first focus on rotations. If you have done, not done research, focusing on research will be a good idea. Once you have all of this out, then step three, is a good idea taking again before september really helps you if you have a lot of red flags old yog lower scores attempts uh, if you are a recent graduate with high scores probably you can take it maybe in october november uh, because the number of interviews that you can get uh, with the step three results will vary so step three result the mistake is you really need to assess if you need it and if you need it then when do you need it 
Almost all IMG favored specialties now look at step three if you have red flags. So if they take it after September, can they add it to their application? So that's a good question. Uh, I'm taking step three after September. Uh, how do I update the program? So in that case, you just have to uh, update the programs by email or you know reaching out to the program. Your ERA CV cannot be updated once you certify and submit. So on 27 September, your ERA CV is frozen for the season. Okay, which can be a good reason to reach out to the programs, let them know what you've been up to. So it's helpful. Yep. Um, okay, so then that leads us to outreaching to the programs. What's, what can IMGs do better there? So yes, so the program outreach has become increasingly important as competition has grown. So a is program outreach, B is networking, networking with the alumni, with seniors, et cetera. But program outreach specifically, um, you know, given that each program I am, for example, gets about 3000 applications within a week, it's important for you to stand out, right? Um, so program outreach varies with your profile, but you really need to study the program. So going back to the research about the programs, what is each program looking for? Uh, what are their didactics? What type of profile have they interviewed in the past? Um, you know, do you have a fit? So expressing your genuine interest and fit to the program is absolutely important. Now, some students ask us, you know, we have 200 plus 400 programs. How do I do this? So that's where some of these artificial intelligence tools like chat GPT come in play. They will not replace your intellect, but they will really help you synthesize your outreach messages, you know, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's email, whether it's even a phone call. So we, we have covered extensively program outreach in our classes. Program outreach does not start just a week before September 27th or September 27th. Mm -hmm. Program outreach is a four or five month long process between now and January. And then you're talking about a uh, letter of intent and all that. It's a very important component. In fact, all our students have always told us that due to the program outreach, they were able to increase their interview count by X and sometimes even the eventual match so program outreach is one of the biggest mistakes or lack of program outreach or lack of doing the right program outreach is one of the biggest mm -hmm. mistakes that IMGs make. Right. So you mentioned it. I do get asked a lot. Is it appropriate to call programs? So uh, it depends on, um, you know, when you do it, how you do it. It may not work for everyone. So for... Uh, you know, we'll have to look at your profile and then we can guide you. But but there are a lot of strategies to do it, right? So emailing, LinkedIn, uh, attending their uh, sessions on on Instagram when they when they have these live sessions, meet and greet kind of sessions, uh, faxing. So uh, we have covered all of this uh, in our classes. And like I said, it depends on the profile. It depends on your personality. And sometimes the programs may not, may not encourage. So all this needs to be taken into account. Right. Okay, so the next couple of points are on the interview preparation. What, what should students be doing for interviews? Yes, so uh, this is another big mistake. Uh, we, a lot of students, especially high scorers, think that, mm -hmm. um, you know, I got 10 interviews. Uh, interview is a general chit chat and I will match. So a couple of things you need to consider. Interview is not general chit chat. Each and every question they're asking, there is a reason for it. Each program, again, let's say 20 spots is gonna interview 300 applicants. So you really need to even, let's say a question like, uh, tell me something about yourself. You may not think very, uh, seriously about it. It's one of the most important questions and most of the IMGs do not know how to answer it. Uh, tell me about your volunteering activities. You know, again, you may think, uh, you know, just uh, 
doing one volunteering or a one sentence will be okay. It is not. Uh, tell me about your hobbies. You know, talking about cooking and cricket in, in just one sentence doesn't cut it. So interview preparation is about communicating your fit to the program, reflecting on your experiences. Uh, that is very, very important. We have had students who have matched with one interview because they prepared well. We also have had students with 10 interviews sometimes who are not serious about preparation and they don't match. So then in the next season, you know, then they become active. The other thing is if you have high scores, if you have a good profile, your challenge is to match at a top program. You know, let's say you have 10, 15 interviews how can we help you match in a top program? That should be your goal. And that is our goal. Because with a 15 interview, if you rank, if you match at your 15th ranked program, you know, that's not really doing justice to your profile. So we have a lot of extensive classes, I think more than 30 plus hours where we go over these questions. You know, we have medical questions class, behavioral questions class. I personally do 12 of these classes where we go into each one of those questions in a group setting. We uh, discuss students, practice these questions real time, and we, we give them feedback. So interview preparation is actually very important. And I get a question a lot. Do, do programs ask just general questions or do they ask like medical questions too? Um, it depends on the specialty. It depends on the program. So, uh, for example, an internal medicine program in New York, uh, you know, pick a program is likely to ask you medical questions. Uh, if you are going for a family medicine interview, uh, it's mostly behavioral and your experiences. So it will depend on the specialty. It will depend on the program. And this is where our list becomes very important. Uh, we have uh, gathered experiences from all programs. So let's say uh, you're interviewing at St. Barnabas in New York for internal medicine. We can tell you the type of questions they are going to ask you. Okay, that's helpful. Um, okay, so then the last point then is the rank order tool. How does that work and how can we help with that? So, you know, after you interviewed, and, and I want to go back to the interview. So during the interview, you really have to be very professional. You have to showcase your unique qualities and things like that. But we'll, we'll talk about, I guess, interviews uh, in the coming uh, months. Uh, the last part is, of course, uh, how, how do you rank the program? So after the interview comes your letter of interest and how do you communicate with the programs and let's say you have five programs then how do you rank it uh, can be based on a lot of factors your preferences matter right so whether it is the the program culture whether it's the location whether it is the didactics or the curriculum a lot of students make this mistake. They do not understand how the ranking or the NRMP algorithm works. Remember that a rank order list does not determine if you match or not. It just tells you where you will match if the program ranks you. So a lot of uh, misconceptions uh, are there on how the NRMP algorithm works and probably we'll do it um, in a different uh, session, but this is a big mistake. Programs, uh, students do not understand the rank order algorithm. And that's where we have a list. We have a rank order list tool where students can go step by step, understand how it works, put their programs. And in a very quantitative way, it tells you which programs you should rank higher than the, the other program. So rank order list, coming towards the end of the program is an important aspect, but a lot of students uh, do not uh, know how this works. So they make mistakes. Great, God, we can help with that. Um, I wanted to mention one thing that you said about interviews. I always tell students if they get even one interview, they're on the same playing field as everybody else, that preparing for those interviews is, is huge and, and you can match with just one interview, so. Yes. Um, yeah. 
and 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 to to the point uh, you know many of you have asked us only about the interview preparation plan so so you don't need to worry we will actually start interview preparation plans earlier this season so by wednesday for those of you who are already done with your applications and all that and are looking for focused interview preparation in a couple of days you will see those plans up and running so you can join uh, our interview prep right away all right uh, i think right. uh, can we dive into the questions shala or yeah those are the 10 mistakes that we've been through so let's see what people are asking okay um i can read uh, read these questions so that's fine and if there are links maybe you and and uh, sejal can uh, po post po put those sorry um, so I'll first go into what I'm seeing in the Q&A, then I'll go into the chat. If I miss a question, you can let me know. So first question comes from, do you think it matters if my relative who is a physician in the US writes me a letter if I rotate with him? We have the same surname. So it's, <laughs> it's a sensitive and a tricky question. You do not want all letters from physicians of your nationality, your surname, et cetera, et cetera. A letterhead matters. The content of the letter also matters. I think if you have done rotations with, with them and you are able to explain during the interview what your work you've done, I think that's fine. Uh, but don't overdo it. Uh, next question, are two US LORs enough? Uh, and one medicine chair LOR from home country. I think we'll need to look at your profile. Uh, recent graduate, old graduate, high scores, low scores. Generally, we are recommending four LORs. And of course, quality of LORs also matters. Uh, so um, home country LORs typically do not have that value. I completed MD pathology from my home country. I am applying for internal medicine. How risky is it? So this is something we come across very, very uh, often. Pathology is a very different specialty than a clinical specialty like internal medicine. It is going to be very different. Uh, you will need uh, to have a lot of USCE relevant kind of uh, experiences. And, and we can help you in our uh, platinum plan if, if that is what you want. But in general, it's not going to be easy because you've already done a home country residency in pathology and you want to move to a clinical specialty like I am. Among LORs with university letterhead in outpatient setting and hospital letterhead in inpatient setting, which is better? I think we'll have to look at the quality of those letters and which hospital and which universities. If it's a top university observership, one month observership is fine. But if you have four observerships without any hands-on at a university, that won't help you. Uh, 2018 grad home country residency aiming for 2024 match giving step one in three weeks planning to give step two by November so basically you're applying in September so if you're uh, you're applying in September 2024 because if you're giving step two by November this match season is going to be hard so get in touch with us uh, after your step one and we can guide you on what else to do and if you have a ck score then we can talk about it uh, do programs consider two years back lors good question i think recent lors are much better uh, two years old lor it's not that you can update the date. That doesn't make it a recent LOR. We'll, we'll have to see where these LORs are from, but we typically recommend, and if you've seen program directors on our uh, show on YouTube and all, uh, recent LORs are much better. I don't have any observerships, but work experience as medical assistant for two years. Can it count as a USC? Uh, yes, I mean, work experience is good. We also have to look at other parts of your profile to see if, uh, you know, it matters. And that gives me, uh, puts me to another point. We do profile reviews. Shala actually does it. I do it. So Sejal, maybe you can put them a link for profile reviews. Those of you who still have questions, who want to know about your profile and what you should do, when you should do, Send us your CV. I don't know if we have 
time for a one-on-one -on -one profile review or how out we are, but uh, we can review your profile and uh, give you suggestions for, for this season. So there are, uh, you know, things we can do to help you. So Sejal, if you can put that profile review link or maybe Shaila, you can. Um, question, uh, 20, 2002 graduate with orthopedics, uh, the home country, chance to match around 2020 score. So ortho will be very hard with the score. Anyway, ortho is one of the hardest, but we can help you in internal medicine if that is the interest or some other specialty. So get in touch with us. We'll need to look at your profile, uh, take that profile review link, upload your CV and, and all that, and we'll help you. USMLE step three score before September versus USCE which one is better. So I think, like I said, we'll have to see what type of USC you already have. You only have outpatient, you have observership. So type of USC will determine uh, whether you need step three. I think uh, USC is more important in general. Without USC, no one can match. 2023 graduate with a 262 and a 254. Excellent scores, very high year of graduation. You have done very well. Should I give step three before application? I don't think you need to give step three. We can help you with stronger rotations and research before application. Yours is a good profile. Why would you need step three? I think focus on good research and rotations. You, you'll be fine. Does volunteering help you to match? And if so, which type of volunteering services? So volunteering does help. It helps during the interview. It does not help you get the interview. And we'll have more sessions on that. Um, now let me go to chat. I haven't looked at the chat yet. Uh, Shela, any question in the chat that I should take? Uh, one I saw was how helpful is a PD LOR? So yes, program director, LOR. Uh, so I don't see, uh, so I hope you are putting in the link for a profile review. I think that is it's a, in there. if you put, yeah. yeah, just keep putting it because I think students are still asking. So PD LORs are important. It, uh, you know, again, obviously uh, depending on the duration uh, because we have a couple of PD rotations, which are very useful hands-on rotations in Michigan, in New Jersey. Uh, uh, PD rotations help not only in their programs, but in other programs uh, as well. Uh, questions, how can I find hospital observership in your um, uh, inpatient, oh, no. outpatient? So, uh, so Naveed, uh, maybe Sejal, you can put a link to our resident, you know, the... Um, rotations page and uh, so you can filter inpatient outpatient and by location so you should be able to uh, get that uh, rotations like and we do have everything two year fellowship in the us will count as a good clinical experience so i need to know what fellowship you're talking about if for example geriatrics or uh, something else that's a good one for sure yes uh, does VA physicians LOR stand out from others? Well, I mean, content really matters. So, you know, uh, we'll have to look at the content to decide whether it stands out. Uh, if you have low scores and YOG more than five, what can I do to increase the chances? Uh, I think we'll have to look at your profile and then guide you specifically what specific research you can do what specific rotation you can do, uh, what type of outreach. So we'll have to look at that. Uh, okay, can we add 10 experiences, LORs on ERAS? Do program see three LORs only? So that's a good question. Program will only see up to four LORs. You can upload as many as you want. What is a good safe step two score for IM. It depends on a lot of factors, uh, your visa status, your other parts of profile, your year of graduation. Uh, let's say if you need a visa, I think 240 is a good score, but again, score by itself will not guarantee any match. So other things really need, uh, you know, we have to uh, look at other things also. Do step three scores matters? Uh, 
it yes, yes anything which is a score will matter so a 210 on step 3 is is not as good as a 240 in step 3 uh, so it it does matter should outreach be done before september 27 outreach is a, a very you know big process it can take months and it depends on the type of outreach so yes uh, what you want to do how you want to do it it all can be done even now all right other questions uh, how to overcome a score of 241 in ck uh, so 241 is a good score uh, even if your yog is five if you get in touch with us we can tell you the type of rotations uh, type of research that will help you but uh, match is definitely possible uh, if you have a 241 uh, in ck what not to write in a personal statement uh, an excellent question um, so again it it depends on your profile that's the first thing uh, i can give you certain examples and we we do have youtube videos where we have outlined the mistakes in fact uh, we did the last workshop on personal statement mistakes to avoid so look at that but i'll give you one just one example uh, a lot of students will say in their personal statement i want to be a cardiologist i want to be a hemonker but in their experiences in their usce they have no research no relevant research they may have only one month of rotation and then they get out and say in their personal statement i want to be a cardiologist those kind of things you need to avoid right, that's just one example what should we focus on mspe mspe in general for imgs does not value too much i mean programs don't really look at it it's a standard kind of a document each uh, um, you know college has a different format unless you are a caribbean img uh, don't really need to focus on mspe uh, there are standard charts you can pull from anywhere and and get done uh yog is more than five years completed my pg how do i make that look good well that's where the iras pscv comes in how do you articulate your experience what exactly did you do how did you manage the floors work in a team all that needs to be highlighted so take a look at our program and and you know it's hard to say how do you make it look good just on on chat does it affect negatively if you want to say we want to become pcp or a hospitalist in general no but we again if you have done five years of research at say cleveland clinic then if you want to say i want to become a pcp or a hospitalist it may not uh, align with uh, you know your profile so that's where you know the personal statement and cv and your interview preparation has to come together that is the key you know that's what you you need all right, I think uh, it's about 45 minutes. Uh, we have covered a lot of ground, so thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I will keep this chat open. Uh, you know, Sejal will be there if you have questions on our plans. She can put on the links and grab the links. Uh, remember, uh, we can do profile reviews, so get those profiles review out. We'll give you specifically what you need to be able to match this season. Uh, we do a lot of these webinars, take a look at our new plans. And if you still have questions, connect with us. Um, and, and of course, uh, uh, you know, we, we are always uh, there to help you with that. Uh, I'm gonna stop the recording, uh, but uh, I have the, the chat box is still open. So,